who was the biggest winner at Cowboys practice on Wednesday? All that and more in this episode of the Lifetime Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked, Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. We've got a special guest uh, with us today. It's Mike Leslie from WFAA. You can follow him on Twitter at Mike Leslie WFAA. Mike, Cowboys practice kicked off on Wednesday. How was it? feels good to finally be out here, man. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're actually doing this for real now. I and mean, it doesn't hurt that we're in 68 degree weather either. And we're not, we're not in the 104 blazing heat in Texas, which is uh, awfully nice. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's good. We're, we're off to, uh, we're off to finally getting things started. And uh, I think the players are excited to be here. The coaches are excited to be here. Even us in the media, we're excited to be here. So we're off and running. Now, I know you can't make any big conclusions after the first day of practice, especially considering they're, they're basically in shorts and T-shirts, right? But we're going to do it anyways, right? So my first question for you is, how did Tyler Smith, the Cowboys' first-round rookie left guard, look in practice? I mean, I thought he looked good. I mean, like you say, it's one, it's the first day of practice, and two, we're talking about an offensive lineman in the scenarios that you're talking about where nobody's wearing even shoulder pads right now. It's just helmets and jerseys. So it's hard to get a, a whole lot of uh, any sort of read off of that. Um, but I think one thing that I thought was interesting was you didn't see him take all of those first-team reps. You saw a little bit of uh, Connor Williams working in there, and, and that is – maybe not an entire surprise. I mean, you're talking about a rookie that, you know, is still the leader in the clubhouse to, to win that job and, and open up week one as a starter for this team, but you got to at least make the kid earn it on, on some level. So to have there be a little bit of a, a challenge laid, laid down before him, I think that's a good thing. And, and he certainly seemed to have a, a little attitude to just how he plays the game. So maybe he's responding to that challenge already. Yeah. He's looking Trim. I don't know if you can say trim for a 320 pound, 25 pound guy, but I mean, he looks like he is in shape, but not surprising that the Cowboys decide to let yeah. Connor McGovern take some of the first, you know, team reps. I'm Excuse sure me, as we get McGovern, into camp. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, but the yeah, more we get into camp, I'm sure that Tyler Smith even more stops. Well, yeah. And Tyler even said that he does feel like he is trimmed down a little bit since even since OTAs and in the work that he got in over the course of OTAs and minicamp and then obviously the work that he did himself between then and now he feels like he's trimmer just since he's been a pro and that's you have to imagine going to help him as he works his way through training camp so Mike one of the players that I think Cowboy fans are really excited to see this year partly because they have such a big need is Jalen Tolbert right still no Michael Gallup Uh, he's on the PUP list Probably not going to be ready for week one, but that's okay. James Washington, we saw him get a little bit banged up today. How do you think Tolbert looked in his first practice as a NFL player? He made one of the splashy plays of the day, made a nice catch in traffic. Again, how much traffic, how much contact can there really be in this moment? But, I mean, he, he took a little bit of a pop and held on, made a nice catch over the middle, and, and at least showed the ability to go up and make a contested catch. And they're going to need somebody to step into that role. And, and whether it's to be the slot guy, we, we'll see exactly what role he fills within this offense. But they need somebody else to make big plays in the passing game. And through one practice, where, you know, we're, we're, we're projecting significantly here, but through one practice, he showed, he showed some things that make you think, all right, he may have something here that, that can be helpful to this offense. I mean, they're going to need him. I mean, he's going to have to probably start week one against Tampa Bay, especially if you know they have any more injuries in camp because Gallup's not going to be ready. It's probably not going to be Noah Brown, even though he's been on this team for a long time. They're going to need somebody that can create some explosive plays, whether it's from the slot or the outside. So it's good to see Tolbert. Again, I know it's only – the first day of practice, but out there making plays. It'll be Noah Brown if they want to telegraph to the defense that it's a run play. Yes. Right? Yes. That's, that's when first it'll be Noah Brown. To run. Yes. <laughs> uh, good old Noah Brown. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Ezekiel Elliott because it feels like the third year in a row where Ezekiel Elliott looks healthy. 
He looks slim. Uh, but I want to I want to ask you if he actually does look explosive. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about a new product that Built Bar is pushing out right now. Are you ready? It's absolutely delicious. It's cookie dough chunk puffs. I actually have one right here. They're absolutely phenomenal. 100% real chocolate, only 160 calories and a whopping 15 grams of protein. Run to built.com to snag a box for you and the family. It's the absolute perfect treat for the summer. Or you can be like me. You can just kind of hide them all over the house so your wife doesn't get them. Go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCK15. All right, Mike. Ezekiel Elliott, I know you, you got to see him today in practice. I think you got to talk to him as well. How is the seventh year running back actually looking in camp? I thought it was interesting how frank he was when he did talk to us after practice about how much he felt like he had lost a step last year because of the knee injury. And he was very frank about how long that lingered into the offseason. He said he got into, you know, January, February and was still kind of nervous, like, hey, this this isn't going away. What's happening here? He said it took all the way until OTAs before he finally felt like he was 100% again. So it was a process for him going through the offseason to get back to the point where he felt like he was healthy. He talked about his, uh, his running back coach, his trainer, Josh Hicks, who has uh, worked with him now for the last couple of offseasons, and just how important that was to just mentally get back to the point where he felt confident that – he was still that guy that he could make those cuts, that he could make those moves, that he could be elusive. It was a process for him to get back to that point and feeling just mentally and, and physically also to an extent like he was that guy again. Again, it's one practice. It's, it's uh, you know, we're, we're seeing him work on the cords. We're seeing him do a little bit in teamwork. We're seeing, I mean, there's, there's, whether or not I can sit here and tell you, yeah, he looks like he looks real crisp and he's, and, Marcus, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's one practice worth. But if he if he's this confident about how he feels, and if he was willing to be that frank and honest about where he was, I'm inclined to believe that he's being honest when he talks about where he is and where he says he is right now is being that guy again. And if he's that guy again, that changes this offense. I thought it was interesting to hear him talk about his contract. Like I think he knows. This is a big year for him. He has no guaranteed money left on his deal after this year. We've seen the Cowboys move on from players like him that are getting a ton of money that aren't maybe performing like an elite player. Uh, I, I think he knows he needs to not only stay healthy, but he needs to just play better. He needs to be a more efficient runner. He needs to be a more efficient receiver. And I think he's at least put himself in a position to do so. Do you still believe that? This is going to be Ezekiel Elliott's backfield and Tony Pollard's going to be kind of the change of pace back. Or are we inching closer to a true 50-50 split? I think it probably inches closer to a true 50-50 split only because while it benefits Zeke Elliott to have a monster year, and obviously that's what he wants out of this season, he wants to prove that he's worth every dollar of that contract. And I think, I think just – in his bones, he wants to be a Dallas Cowboy. I, I think he, I think he enjoys. I think he likes being number twenty-one for the Dallas mm -hmm. Cowboys. I think there's a certain cachet to that that he appreciates, that he likes, that he enjoys, that he wants to continue. Let alone just being a part of this team and wanting to chase after a championship with this team. So I think he he wants to still be here for the Cowboys as an organization financially. I'm not sure that Zeke Elliott having a it's, it's obviously always a good thing for this franchise for their players to play really well. So I, it's it's probably a bridge too far to say that it would be a bad thing for Dallas, for Zeke to have a great year. But if it does inch closer to 50-50 and Tony Pollard is, you know, showing to be just as effective a running back, financially it probably benefits Dallas if that's the way it goes. So I imagine that that on some level impacts the decision making when it comes to who gets what carries. It, we should also mention Tony Pollard, a free agent after this year. So the Cowboys are going to have a really interesting decision to make. I've got a feeling Mike, by the end of the year, we'll know who they want to keep kind of moving forward. Um, so we'll see. I have to ask you about Micah Parsons year two, super confident. Uh, he, I mean, he talked about uh, losing some weight for this upcoming season. How did he look in, in practice number one? Does he is he lining more up at linebacker? Did you see him rush the passer? 
Uh, what did you see out of Knox Stark? We saw him do a little bit of everything. He was all over the place. He was running through drills for a long time with Demarcus Lawrence and Dorrance Armstrong, working specifically on pass rushing and ostensibly working, obviously, as a defensive end in those moments. And then you blink, and 10 minutes later, he's down on the other end of the field, and he's working in with Leighton Van Der Esch, and the two of them are going through linebacker drills together. So they've got him doing absolutely everything, not just in drills, but also in teamwork as well, where he's coming off the edge. And a couple of times, if he were allowed to sack Dak Prescott, he probably would have. And um, so he's he's making an impact like we would expect Michael Parsons to do in a lot of different facets of this defense. It's it's frightening to think if he actually can take this second year jump that Mike McCarthy's talking about. How do you jump when you're already a thousand feet in the air? I mean, he's it's it's scary to think where he can go from here. Yeah, and that's and that's the hope for this defense, right? Because you did lose some some key pieces like a Randy Gregory. If he can just take that next step and really be in that transcendent generational prospect or generational player tier of pass rusher like an Aaron Donald or Miles Garrett or a TJ Watt, that's how this team can win 12 games again this year. They they need Micah Parsons to take that step. And again, I know we're through one practice, but it seems like he's he's already there. You brought up Dak Prescott. Uh, remember at this time last year, we had a lot of questions about the ankle uh, how mobile did he look? And then the shoulder injury obviously popped up later. But just in terms of athleticism and quickness, can you do you notice a difference at practice? I can't say that I do through one practice. I mean, I, I did find it very interesting how frank Jerry was in the state of the team press conference, though, saying that what he needs out of Dak Prescott is to not hurt his shoulder in practice number three, trying to throw the ball the length of the field. And everybody kind of went, that's quite the admission. It's what everybody kind of theorized a year ago, but for them, for him to just come right out and say it was was interesting. I think they probably still, on some level, want to treat him with kid gloves just because he is Dak Prescott, franchise quarterback, and you don't want to risk that in any way, shape, or form. I don't think that they need to do that for any health reason. It's just from a financial standpoint at this point, um, because he's as valuable as he is, because he's as important as he is. You still baby that a little bit um whether or not he's fleeter a foot probably i mean i, 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 I don't know if it matters that much he's not going right. to be running a ton anyways right i it, i think this is one of the most overblown stories that we've had this offseason whether Dak <laughs> is going to run more or not yeah I, I think that's fair i mean that's what we do you know we'll, we'll, we'll take a storyline and we will beat it to death yeah he'll he'll probably run more this year he didn't run a ton last year, and there were reasons for that. This year, an entire year removed now from even as healthy as he was last offseason and last training camp, yeah, you, you, it stands to reason he's going to be more mobile and he'll be more willing to take off and run. That's not, to me, the the deciding factor, though, in, in whether or not this team wins football games. That's going to have to come on his right shoulder and – between the ears and whether or not he can elevate himself into that upper echelon of quarterbacks that for the first six, seven weeks of last season, it looked like, all right, he's that guy. You got to have that for 17 weeks. I mean, it's fair to point out that the Cowboys are still the number one offense in the league last year with Dak really not running at all. And they won a lot of football games. So it's, it's really not that big of a deal, but Jerry Jones is right. Like they need him for all these practices because They've had so much turnover at receiver, and you've got C.D. Lamb taking a bigger role, and you've got a rookie Jalen Tolbert and a new receiver in James Washington. He's got to develop a chemistry with those players, so they need him out there for every single practice to, to develop a, you know some kind of connection with those re receivers. So I don't think Jerry Jones is wrong there at all. One Four years ago, we saw the, this offense crater when they didn't have a wide receiver. It's why they went and got Amari Cooper in the first place. This can't be that now. Obviously, they've got C.D. Lamb, so they're not their receiving core is nowhere near as thin as it was in 2018. But this isn't 2018 Dak Prescott. This is 2022 Dak Prescott. No matter what your wide receivers are, you need to now be the guy that's bringing everybody along with you. Whether that is Jalen Tolbert, whether that's James Washington, whoever slots into that role, now you're the guy. You're the 160 million dollar quarterback. You got to say, everybody, jump on my back and let's go. All right, Mike Leslie out at uh, Cowboys practice in Oxnard. One final question before we uh, head out. 
Was there one player or one play that stood out to you, to you today in practice? I I, I got to go with Anthony Brown's pick six. Yeah, it was it was. He had a pretty good day. He's he's had a pretty good couple days. Celebrated his oh, I believe his oldest son's birthday was yesterday. Then has the pick six. Then he's got his whole family down on the field. His wife, his three sons, all with him after practice, and he's toting his youngest son, who's six months old, around, and everybody's cooing at his bed. I mean, it, it was he was he was having a pretty cool afternoon. Um, but I mean, one, he made a great play on the on the football. The other thing that concerned me, though, a little bit for the Cowboys' offense as it relates to that play. They came out, I went back and looked at the video that our photographer, Arnold Payne, shot of that sequence. And Dallas comes out, very first play of the two-minute drill, and they run. Can I guess? Hold on, can I guess? Is it it a dump off to Dalton Schultz? Yes, it was. (laughs) (laughs) They run a dump off to Dalton Schultz. Play number two, Dak drops back, looks right side, throws in the direction of Anthony Brown, pick going in the other direction, picks this. He and the, and the first team offense have to sit there and twiddle their thumbs for 10 minutes or whatever while Cooper Rush on the second team offense do their thing, and then they get another crack at it. Come back out, very first snap. I imagine you can guess. Jump down to Dalton yep. Schultz. Yep. Second play, again, throw right side, right toward Anthony Brown, and he jumped ahead and knocked it and jumped in front and knocked it away. I can't imagine why Anthony Brown knew what was coming. If your offense is, if your two minute offense is so predictable that I'm standing there on the sideline and as I'm waiting for the first play, I said, gee, I wonder, maybe it's going to be a check down to Dalton mm-hmm. Schultz. Maybe mix it up just, to, I mean, I understand it's day one of practice, yeah, but sure. it just, it always seems like every time we see them jump into two minute, that's the first play. Uh, that's how we, I mean, we both knew, right? It's just that's how they like to start off these drives is get positive yards, get the offense going. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's an issue. But, more importantly, back to Anthony Brown. Yeah. The, him having this play in camp, and it, it's not that surprising because last year he was really good. And one of the reasons why the Cowboys didn't need someone like Calvin Joseph to play a bunch of snaps was because Anthony Brown was a really good number two cornerback outside of the Tampa Bay and Las Vegas game. I mean, he was phenomenal. So if the Cowboys can get that version of Anthony Brown again this season – Trevon Diggs continues to be an all pro level cornerback and you get J Ron curse playing at a near pro bowl level. I mean, I don't want to get too excited, Mike, but this Cowboys defense could be pretty good. Once again, it's not surprising to see the defense start off. Well, one, it's a little bit easier for the defense to be ahead of the offense at this stage of training camp, but also I think the defense is the better unit for this football team right now. There, there's a lot of talent on that side of the football, and they lost some key pieces, but I think they lost less than the offense did in this offseason, obviously. So if I'm handicapping that right now, I think that's the stronger unit. And I think to go back to specifically Anthony Brown, I don't think we give enough value to how much a moment like that, especially on day one of training camp and just buoy a guy's confidence. And, and, and when you're, when you're strutting out there playing with confidence, your, your level, it, it does increase. There is an, there is a noticeable lift that can come with that. Not a bad thing for Anthony Brown to start off that way. Not bad at all. It's still crazy to me that this defense might be better than the offense. If you would have told me that a year ago, I know uh, would, would have been absolutely. Every, everybody would have told you you're crazy. But that's kind of the, the power of Dan Quinn and putting these guys in positions to make plays and feel confident and play fast. And I think Anthony Brown is really one of the perfect examples of that. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Podcast. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in with the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. Uh, you can follow the show wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you check out Mike on Twitter at Mike Leslie WFAA uh, doing some fantastic work out at Cowboys camp. I'm sure he's going to have uh, a ton of great interviews and some great videos over the next several weeks. Make sure you check him out there. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.